So you guys want to learn how to take care of different species of tortoises, different reptiles, and that's why we are here at Camp Kennan working so hard for you. We like to get these animals the best chance at survival in captivity and help you be positive keepers, but there's one animal, or tortoise rather, that you want to know about more than any others in the comments, and that is this little dude, the Russian tortoise. So today we're going to spend a lot of time with this little tortoise and help you help him have a fantastic life in his new home. A good portion of my life has been all about action, which still holds true. But now I pour all that time and energy into wildlife conservation, education, and the pursuit of knowledge. This is Camp Kenner. So as I mentioned, the Russian tortoise is definitely the most popular pet tortoise in the United States right now, and that's for good reason. This animal right here actually doesn't attain a really large size. In fact, this is a full-grown male, and I actually have two others that are hiding in the cactus. Come on down here, I wanna sit down and relax with these tortoises. Now, I do not keep or breed Russian tortoises. In fact, for me, out here in the very humid, subtropical climate of South Florida, these guys don't do so well outdoors, and I really love to keep my animals outdoors. It's just, for me, more fun to build an outdoor enclosure. So if these animals get too wet, they will get a lot of skin fungus, shell fungus, and then respiratory problems and wind up dying. So it's not a great tortoise for me. These guys, the ones hiding over here, uh, these three were kept indoors and were given to the Bush Wildlife Sanctuary. Uh, I took them because I'm the resident tortoise expert. And uh, basically, I'm sending these animals to Southern California, which has a more agreeable climate and is closely like the climate that these guys are from. So they also call these the Russian tortoise, and you know, that's kind of a misnomer. It's not the best name for this animal. It's actually the Horsefields tortoise. Now these tortoises aren't from Russia, they're actually from Central Asia. Pakistan, Afghanistan, Uzbekistan. But what happened was when the Russians were in Afghanistan in the late 70s and early 80s, they would bring these tortoises home as pets and they got the name the Russian tortoise. But this is a small species, does not get very large. They live in steppes. Now steppes are high elevated grasslands. And so these animals will experience very minimal rain, but they'll also experience kind of cold weather so they can hibernate uh, across their range. In fact, another problem why I couldn't breed them is because in order to breed them, they need to hibernate. The males and females need to shut down for a few months so they can recharge all those hormones that tell them when to breed. So usually they'll come out of hibernation, get hydrated, and then they look for a female to start breeding. Now there are some private breeders of this tortoise in the United States, but unfortunately these animals are not bred in a large enough number to really sustain the pet market. And here's where things get kind of sad and what a lot of people don't know about the Russian tortoise. And that is these animals, almost all the animals in the United States are being collected from the wild. And if you guys follow along here at Camp Kennan, you know I'm really not a big collector from the wild uh, as a way to supply the pet trade. Really not too cool for these animals. These guys are being almost completely wiped out in their Central Asian habitats because they're supplying the food, excuse me, not the food, the pet trade here in the United States and in other countries in Europe. What I would suggest, if you do get one of these animals, um, you want to try and get a captive raised one. They're gonna be more expensive, but here's why getting a captive raised Russian is better than getting a wild caught one. Number one, you're not helping fund that trade in these animals. Number two, what a lot of people don't realize is when these animals are imported, very few actually make it uh, many of them die, but they're they're kept in these places in these in these um, shipping facilities where the animals are just crawling on top of each other. They're not eating. Their internal parasites are just blooming. Those parasites really blossom, and then they turn into some diseases. And you can actually get a very lethal disease. It's been found in this particular species. It's a type of herpes virus, and it's found sometimes in the Russian tortoise. Now, sometimes these animals can carry this virus, and it doesn't hurt them. But if they come in contact with some of your other pet tortoises, it is lethal to them. So I'm not saying that 
Russian tortoises shouldn't be touched or shouldn't be kept. I'm saying you have got to keep them separate from your other animals if you're going to keep them. Very, very important. But let's get down to business. The Russian tortoise is a grassland species, so they're going to really be able to take a wide range of temperatures as long as things are kept dry. Do not get these animals cold and damp. No way. They will not do well. And even hot and damp is no good, as I mentioned earlier. But being a grassland species, they are very, very herbivorous. Uh, they are going to be eating different leaves, different grasses. Uh, these animals love the high fiber green leafy, leafy diet. So in captivity, He's kind of motoring away here. In captivity, the Russian tortoise, you're going to be able to feed him escarole lettuce, romaine lettuce, collard greens, dandelion greens, hibiscus, leaves and flowers. You want to sh uh, shred some carrots for vitamin A, some yellow squash, shred it up for vitamin A. You can feed them some of the Zoomed uh, grassland tortoise diet is another fantastic thing if you're keeping these animals in captivity. Um, basically, uh, that's going to do it. Now, I will say this, and I've gotten into arguments with some people, they don't realize you can feed some of these animals a small amount of fruit. In the wild, they will eventually come across fruit during different times of the year. Now, you're not going to see these guys drink a lot. I recommend giving them soaks uh, and always providing a water dish for them, but you're not going to see Russian tortoises drink a lot because most of the water they get, they get it metabolically from their food. But if you're eating leaves and eating grass, there's not a lot of moisture in it. That's why the fruit I want you to feed your dry or grassland species is watermelon uh, and some cantaloupe. Just a little bit, maybe once every two weeks. This way you know what's in watermelon, lots of water. So it's a good way to get metabolic moisture into your pet tortoise and keeping their kidneys happy because if these animals don't get enough hydration, they don't uh, secrete urine the same way people do. When they are trying to retain liquid, they don't uh, put uh, the uric acid out in a liquid form. They put it out as a solid. That's what you'll see, that white powder. Sometimes you see it has the, the consistency of toothpaste, but sometimes if your animal's too dry, it comes out like a powder. And eventually, they're not even able to secrete it and they'll die of renal failure, kidney failure, because the uric acid builds up and it actually impacts uh, their, their excretory system or their metabolic waste system, uh, getting rid of the uric acid. So the these animals right here have to be hydrated. Very, very important. The other things, basic. You're going to want shelter, a really great substrate. I like to use repti bark. I like to use sometimes dry cypress mulch, and you mix it in with a loamy soil. You can get some organic potting soil and add some sand to that as their substrate. But whenever you feed them, make sure you feed them on a water dish. When you're keeping them indoors, which most of you are going to be doing, have to make sure they have a Vitalite, UVB lighting. They're going to need a basking light as well. You want to get the temperatures in the basking area up around yeah, about 95, 100 degrees. These guys can take it a little bit warm. So make sure they've got that nice hot basking area to raise their metabolism, help them digest all the roughage that you're going to be feeding them. And then the ambient temperature should be in the 80s. Um, you can let the nighttime temperatures drop down into the upper 60s as long as it's dry. And then if you get to be a real expert Russian tortoise keeper. You can even hibernate these animals uh, by putting them in peat moss, in a slightly moisted peat moss, okay? And then you put them in a refrigerator for artificial hibernation. But that is only for experienced keepers and we'll get into that in another video. But right now, I just want you to try and focus on the basics for keeping the Russian tortoise a happy, healthy addition to your tortoise collection or your family. They're personable, they're funny, they move around a lot, and if you're doing the right thing for them, they will live a very, very long time. So these three guys, like I said, are going to go to San Diego. We're going to get them shipped off to their new home. They'll be there tomorrow. It's going to be really cool, and it's going to make one little girl very, very happy. So we found a nice home for them, the Russian tortoise, an amazing little species. Do what I said, and don't forget, there's a lot more information out there. Read up on them, and find out what works for you. Just try and keep it in the parameters that I set forth. There you have it, the Russian tortoise. I'm going to let him walk around, find his little buddies, and maybe get a nibble of some natural grasses. That's always good to do, too. See you guys next time.